Hey, Greg. Um, first of all, get your thoughts on the win, and then we'll follow with questions there. Uh, I'm really proud of our guys. I thought for 90 minutes it was a very professional uh, performance. I thought it was our best, by far, best defending game of the season. Just the collective work, uh, reactions, uh, the way we dealt with situations, I thought was was very, very good. Um, yeah, I mean, we created a lot of chances. There were more goals in that game than than we took at the end. But um, yeah, I thought it was a was a great performance. So I feel like we're we're again starting to find some rhythm, and uh, yeah, we'll continue to try to build off of it. But there was a lot of good things to take away from this game, and some guys had some exceptional games as well. And how bad did you guys want the clean sheet? Sorry? How bad did you guys want the clean sheet? Oh, yeah. I mean, the guys wanted it. was unfortunate because, you know, uh, I think it was Julian who was injured and he was off the field. And I, I think the guy's assumption was if they held their line that he would be off sides. And the rule is if you're off the field, you're considered on the goal line. So you pretty much keep everybody on side. So it was a little, a little bit unfortunate um, <clears throat> because I, I could tell everybody was working hard for it. It's something that we've been talking a lot about and um, and – I thought we deserved it in the end, and it was a little unfortunate that we didn't close it out with with a shutout. Uh, it was a great defensive effort. What do you what do you think were the the biggest details within that 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 was going your way? Yeah, I think a couple of things. The last couple of days, you know, we walked through, talked through, uh, videoed through everything, just um, getting more clarity in terms of our defensive side. And I thought we we kept things really clear. Everyone was was engaged. We never really gave up spaces in between us. I thought we were, uh, our spacing was good. Everybody was moving at the right speeds, generally speaking. And, and yeah, when everybody's working together, and like I said, it was clear, we didn't get mixed up. Even when they made rotations, by and large, we managed those rotations pretty well. So I felt like we're not the most communicative team, but I felt like tonight we, maybe we were talking more, but we certainly or organized ourselves and dealt with situations better. Uh, I think each guy individually in their one-on-one -on -one duels was was better tonight as well. Um, you know, Jay stepped in a few times and, and took some fouls around midfield, and, you know, that's something that we, we want him just to be a little more physical in terms of presence. I thought he was there. I thought Martin looked very very sound and experienced and uh, I think Lucas and Julian continue to grow inside of the team and I thought Lucas was exceptional and um, yeah I think everybody starting from Javi and and Ricky were super engaged in the defensive side of things tonight and that that really helped us out we were more efficient defensively which gave us more clear clear possessions that we could use throughout the course of the game and then uh, you bring Dayon in at the end um at a time when oftentimes you would have brought on a defender. I'm wondering, one, what your thinking was on bringing Dayon in. But also, he, he's a guy who was getting a lot of chance to play, and, he, and we've seen the kind of scoring rate that he can have, and he just wasn't getting goals as the team wasn't getting goals. And the way that he got that goal tonight, after losing the ball, the, what he showed to go back and yeah. kind of take it over. You could just talk a little bit about what that did and what that might mean for him in terms of confidence going forward. Yeah, he, he's... He's a hungry kid to score goals. I mean, when so when you put him on the field, you know, you know, especially on, as a substitute role, he knows he only has a finite amount of time. And today, it took one minute, uh, and he knows he has a finite amount of time to just put everything out there to try to get his chances and to score a goal. And I think that's a little bit of that moment. He's he's also a competitor in in the way that he knew at one zero, part of his job was to defend and to help us to get pressure to the ball and. Uh, you know, he lost the ball that was played, as you mentioned, played into him with his back and it was kind of tight, but he lost it and he just stayed with it and just kept relentlessly going after it and dug it out um, and then took the finish with, with style. And um, yeah, like, like I said, it starts really from he's a competitor, he's a winner. And when he stepped on the field, he, he knew his job was to help us defend this thing out and he, he turned that into, into a goal. So uh, it's exceptional. But he's, again, he showed it last year and this year. Um, his capacity to come on the field as as a sub and and impact the game is is probably second to none. Um, I know he doesn't want to be that guy always and forever, but uh, but he has certainly carved out a niche for himself that is pretty special. When you have a, a bullet in your holster like that, that can come on and and uh, get you a, a goal. And well, tonight was really fast, but usually he comes on and and he gets you something. And so um, 
It was great. It was great. I was really happy for him because we play on Wednesday. So part of it was as long as we stayed in control of this game, I wasn't going to use as many guys because, you know, I don't know how many guys are going to be able to play the three games as quickly as we're going to turn. And I wanted to be able to to save some guys uh, to use on Wednesday that I know I'm going to use. And so um, as long as we stayed comfortable in the match, I was going to stay, keep the guys out there. So that's why it was a late sub and, and he did everything he could with his, his minutes, you know, his couple minutes that he had. Yeah, because part of it is at the, that point in the game is about getting pressure at, on the ball away from your goal. And, uh, and, you know, Javi had put in a, a heck of a shift. I thought he was working till the end, but just getting some fresh legs up there with Ricky, just again to track things, chase things, try to get pressure at the point of the service means you don't necessarily have to defend so deep. So uh, that helped us out. Great. Congratulations on the win. Uh, we know a lot of this game is mental. Now you have two wins in five games. You dominated this game. What does that do for the mentality and, and just the players feeling good about themselves in the direction? Yeah, I think uh, these are positive, positive things. You know, I think the group <coughs> has... We've undone ourselves in many of these games, you know, and so it's been about closing gaps for us, finding the things that, you know, we're going to be most comfortable in with this group. We, like I said, many times we've looked at two forwards in different shapes and different things to see if we could get those two on the field together. But I, I don't think it's shown to be comfortable for everybody uh, and it hadn't shown to be overly successful just in terms of more goals. So I think getting getting results from a mentality standpoint gives you the sense, uh, and especially based on the performances, that you're on the right track and that the the guys are are uh, you know they gain confidence from those types of performances. I thought the way we defended tonight. I'm gonna keep saying it because I know we can score goals, but if we defend like we did tonight, we're gonna win many more games. I, I just firmly believe that with our group because we have a lot of good soccer players, but defending is something that we need to concentrate on, and tonight we did. So I, I think there's a lot for us to to build off of. And I think the Open Cup game was important for us to play that game the way we came out and played it with our guys that played tonight. We needed that game to find a rhythm and some things that, that I think really helped us tonight to get a result. Hey, Greg. Um, happy so. Mother's Day to all the great women in your life and happy Thank Mother's you. Day to, to all else. of the great women here at LA Galaxy. Thank you. Um, a question for you as a coach. It's been a tough season so far. It was almost a flawless game tonight. Did you find some enjoyment as a coach on the sidelines, watching as well as having to manage the process and the in-game management of everything as well? I did. I, I, I really enjoyed it tonight. I felt like um, I was quite comfortable and calm because I felt like the guys were quite comfortable in, inside of the game. And for me, it was a game of a few details that we could clean up here or there along the way. It wasn't like sometimes you're in games, you're like, there's a lot of things inside of this game that need to be sorted out that just aren't going well and we need to clean up. And tonight it wasn't about many things. It was about a few details here or there. Um, but I thought the performance was, <clears throat> again, it was a great effort uh, and the performance was good. And I, I, I felt like we had, were in total control of the game and, and that, you know, if we could stay the course throughout the course of the game, we were going to, we were going to win. You know, I, I wasn't even that concerned that we missed a few chances early because I felt like we were in, in control of things. And so, and they weren't hurt us, hurting us defensively. That's when I usually get a little uncomfortable is when, when, we look, uh, when we look vulnerable on the defensive side. And tonight we look sound. Yeah, thank you. I can hear you. Yeah, I you know Danny is a he's a very versatile player. You know I can I can play him almost in most positions on the field. So I can use him as a fullback, a central midfielder, a winger, and he helps us just in terms of keeping the ball, good sound decisions. Uh, you know he's got a nice composure and calmness about him when he comes, and I think it helps the team to be a little more stable at, sometimes when he comes on. And I, I think he's just continued to grow with each year and with each month to become just more and more reliable. So he's a guy that I know exactly what I'm going to get when I put him on the field. And so, uh, and like I said, I've used him in different roles. I can put him in the midfield and I think he's going to play the same game as if I put him at right wing or if I play him at right back. So I just think he's such a mature, calm, like Jalen, like so calm in his presence and the way he approaches the game that he tends to make a really a lot of good decisions. And I think uh, he just has that maturity about him that's that I think is easy to rely on. Uh, next, we'll go to Charlie Bohm on Zoom. 
Hi, Greg, can you hear me? Yes. You found me. Hi, Greg, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, so we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. Sorry. Um, I, just uh, speaking of details, uh, uh, Bobasi and Espinosa have been very productive this year. Um, did you play them straight up or did you make any little adjustments to, to limit their influence because they were, they were kind of peripheral tonight? Nothing. I mean, nothing that was really focused on on them specifically, except for the fact that we know that they're very good players. And so the guys that were like Julian, who was defending him, he stayed at home a little bit more, obviously. And so he was in positions to deal with uh, with Espinoza, who I think is a fantastic player. And I just think because Julian wasn't as involved in the attacking and trying to do too much on the on that attacking side, he was just in positions to be able to defend and use his energy and and. Uh, his his thinking to to deal with a very good player. Uh, I think you know in terms of Jeremy. I think the guys just did a good job of of crowding him out, not letting him get too involved in the game. We took away crosses, so they didn't have a lot of balls that they were able to cross in front of the goal because of the defending. Uh, by and large, was was good. They were having a hard time breaking us down. So that mean that means it's hard for a forward to get involved when when. Uh, they can't get around us, and they can't really get through us too easily. So uh, I thought we were did a nice job of everybody. The guys on the field did a nice job of dealing with a very good, very good players. Hey, Dayan, uh, walk us through your moment there. You come on one minute, you lose the ball, you regain it, you score. What's going through your mind as you know, in basically a minute minute time of, of play there? I mean blackout. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm very happy because I scored. Uh, I pressed that guy very good. And obviously, I scored quite nice goal. I'm very happy because we won the game, finally. Two games in a row, three points. Uh, for us, it's very important to reach, uh, to make it to the playoffs. That's our goal for, for this season. And after that, everything is possible. Hopefully, one step more than last year. Even better, two steps more. Um, Dan, uh Greg was talking about you, you've shown again and again the way you can score off the bench and just come in and score right away. And uh, as he points out, that's not necessarily the role he wants to play. Doing something like this, in what ways do you think it helps you in order to play the role that you want to play with this team? Uh, yeah, last season I said the same thing. Of course, I want to, to play more, but sometimes I need Few few minutes or seconds to score, which is good. Uh, if I have to, I'm gonna sacrifice myself for the team, and if I have, I'm gonna start every game from the bench. Uh, yeah. Hey, Dayan. Uh, now you're the leading scorer on the team with two goals. Um, you know, you mentioned right now you're willing to sacrifice your time to, you know, be able to help the team in any way. Um, but for you, having the motivation of being called up with the Serbian national team um, just a couple of weeks ago and, you know, still trying to fight for minutes and, and things like that, I mean, how much of a drive has this experience, you know, being a, a sub helped you in your game, you know, both mentally and on the pitch? Uh, to be honest, in this league, sometimes it's better to play last 25, then play first 65 and get subbed. So because in this league, like in the last 25 minutes, games game open up and you have more opportunities to score. Uh, you mentioned national team. I mean, I'm, it's my pleasure to play for my country. And I'm happy that my coach is watching this league. I think that this league is very good and it will be even better, especially because in the Two or three years is the next World Cup here, and Canada and Mexico as well. So I'm very motivated to be there. I mean, you can check the list of our players from Serbia. Uh, also the strikers. I mean, very, very good squad, and I'm always happy to play for my country. Of course. I mean, after each win, you are more happy, you are more ready. I think that we played good, not that good, but we played decent games. 
uh, in the last 10 games, I mean, f in the first 10 games of the season, but we couldn't score. When we scored the first goal, it looks like that we are going to win every game. So we didn't use our chances, chances, but we didn't have that much chances, very good chances. So it's, it will be better, I hope so. Dion, congratulations on the win and the goal. Uh, your goal was, uh, the celebration was very, very emotional. All your teammates came and mobbed you on the bench. How much did you and your teammates need that moment together to just kind of like let loose and for lack of a better term, howl out the wind together and just, you know, have that moment of togetherness? I mean, everyone needs the support like I had. If, everyone, if, if every player has the support like I had, I think that sky is the limit. Then kind of to that point, I know you probably don't think about it, but can you talk about the celebration? Like, what was going through your mind? You said blackout, you scored quick. And you've had some good celebrations in the stadium, but I think that kind of goes to the top of the list. I don't know what I did there. I told you blackout completely, but what can I say? Uh, I have to say, Martin, congrats for the first goal, but his celebration was so bad. So he needs to practice a little bit. We are going to show him many times, hopefully, this season. Thank you so much. Good night.